Welcome to a new vlog. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the new Canlight Revision D, which is now ready to be ordered on my Tindy store, and you'll find the link to my Tindy store in the description below. And I'm gonna be talking about how this is different to the previous one, the Rev C. Yes, I'm already at Revision D for these boards, and that's partly due to the ongoing global chip shortage which forces me to switch to different components with every new batch that I manufacture but I'll get into that later. First, if you don't know what Canlight is, let me tell you a few words about this board. So the idea for this started back when I first experimented interfacing with the CAN bus on my car for various automotive modules like the instrument cluster, the CAN gateway, the parking sensor module, the multimedia unit, and I wanted to see what kind of messages get transmitted on the CAN bus network, if and how I can intercept and modify those or maybe insert my own messages. So basically hacking the CAN bus network on my car. And I did a whole video on that subject a year ago. It's log 342 which I will link on screen right now if you haven't seen that video and you're interested in the subject go check it out. So I wanted to create this little board that could be installed in a car and perform various functions on the CAN bus. I chose the ESP32 as the main processing unit because that's plenty of processing power for the task on hand. It's also cheap, it has Wi-Fi and built-in CAN peripherals and best of all during these times it is still available in stock so it was a logical choice for me to use it. I still needed to add an external CAN transceiver to generate the differential voltage levels for the actual physical link and hence why you'll see this little guy in here and while I was there I also threw in an automotive grade uh, buck regulator and a couple of automotive grade high side switches just in case I needed to switch a load and uh, something like a light or a motor or whatever you might need because these automotive high side switches are pretty robust and you can drive pretty much anything you want with them. And this kind of brings me to the reason for revision D. I'm sure you are aware of the ongoing global chip shortage and how car manufacturers have to stop their manufacturing plants because they can't get the chips they need. Well guess where that left me with my automotive high side switches and automotive buck regulator that I was using in revision B and C. Yeah, not a great choice of parts when it comes to availability. I mean, January 2023, that's like 14 months away just for the buck regulator. All while people keep email me constantly to ask about the availability of these can light boards. So the same thing can be said about the high side switches I was using. Uh, these could not be found anywhere in the world and that, that's not the only problem. Uh, you can hardly find any alternative parts either. I spent hours and hours trying to find replacements on DigiKey and Mauser and all I could find is uh, low stock of parts that cost 10 times as much and come in much larger packages or even more expensive than 10 times as much. But in the end, my efforts paid off and I managed to find uh, these uh, BTS uh, 452Ts from Infineon. And although these have a lower maximum switch current and I had to settle for these, I mean, 1.8 amps per channel is still plenty of current to be useful and we still get the nice features like over temperature protection over current protection and general transient protection that these automotive switches feature but it's not the same on state current that the previous uh, switches had. I also had to go for a new inductor which is just slightly different from the previous one uh, but the previous one wasn't available in stock anymore and don't even get me started on the lack of standardization when it comes to these surface mount inductor packages. It's like every time I need to use an inductor, I also have to design a new footprint because they are never the same exact size. So after implementing all of these changes in the PCB design and ordering the required parts, I'm now ready to assemble a new batch of boards and start making them available on Tindy. As usual, PCBWay is the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Vollog channel, so I had these boards manufactured with them. I submitted a single board Gerber file and I opted for their uh, panelizing service. So they created this 3x3 panel with v-scoring between boards to make the manufacturing process more efficient. Quality is very good as usual and I'm pretty happy with how these look in the standard green solder mask and they are currently running this uh, campaign on their website where they ask 
for uh, feedback from customers so if you submit pictures of your uh, finalized design you can win some uh, cash coupons which is pretty nice because it's hardly any effort so check out the website link below i went ahead and tested these uh, new high side switches and they work just fine thermal protection and overcurrent protection uh, kicks in as expected there is a small hysteresis and then it automatically comes back online after the fault is removed or after the temperature goes down so everything seems to work as expected on this new revision d and as a bonus these new high set switches uh, because of uh, these higher power rated uh, packaging that they come in it just feels like they're going to be doing better uh, thermal wise source files will be on my github which i'll also link below same as always my designs are open source so check them out i also plan to release some example code for sending and receiving can messages with this board it will be based on uh, arduino and the platform io package but it should be pretty helpful to get you started now a couple of people ask me if i will be offering this with a different processor unit uh, because right now it's using the uh, standard room 32 module with uh, just four megabytes of flash and i say just four that's plenty for me but for some people which are building more uh, complex applications that might not be enough i currently have no plans for designing a new board to support uh, a different esp module there's just not enough interest for something like that to justify me designing a new board however if you really need more memory just send me an email and ask me for a board uh, without the esp32 module soldered on then you can buy a room module with uh, higher memory capacity i know they they come with like 8 and 16 megabytes and you can solder it yourself and i think that's a good option for those that are looking for uh, more memory other than what i have already mentioned here there are no other important changes i'm i mean i'm not sure i'm i've talked about uh, moving these uh, screw terminals closer together so now they can be clipped together for better mechanical strength and i've also added some test points here with some of the free gpios that you may solder wires and you know use for something extra these are just some minor additional improvements in the design of this board in terms of programming this still uses the same uh, volink jstsh connector which contains rxtx ground io0 enable and 3v3 and you can use a voltlink usb to serial converter to program this board if you have one or just any other usb to serial converter with auto reset functionality uh, you will be getting one of those jst pigtails in the package with the board so let me know in the comments if you have any questions about these uh, can light boards in terms of availability there will probably be like 30 units available for order on tindy which is about the same number of people that are signed up on the waiting list so i imagine they will all be gone pretty soon uh, so as i like to say don't delay order yours today I'm not sure when I'll, I will be able to offer any f uh, future batches of this board. The main issue being the high side switches as the ones in the current design are already out of stock everywhere and I'm not sure I can find any good replacements for months ahead. Uh, but as with the previous model on Tindy you will be able to uh, order a board uh, with one, two or none of the high, high side switches because i imagine there are people who do not have a use for the high side switches they just need the can interface so then uh, there's no purpose for them ordering the board uh, with these high set switches installed and they can save a few dollars that way so that was all for today i need to get started on assembling these let me remind you to smash that like button if you enjoy the content i mean it's just a click away so uh, why not do it or if you'd like, you can help support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month. Stay safe and I will be seeing you next time.